You know, I harp on the Sony guys because of their low IQ and because of their allegiance to a box that is, by definition, anti-consumer. Hey, that's what I do. You and I are going to be on the same page about this then, right? Supplied from a company who does not give two shits about its end user. That's right. Console manufacturers don't care about you or your experience or gaming as a whole. They just care about moving as many units as possible. They'll stretch the truth as much as they can. They'll buy up as many exclusives as they can get away with. These companies don't care about you. And I harp on the Nintendo crowd because they've pledged their allegiance to outdated, antiquated franchises that barely prop Nintendo up into relevancy in the year 2021. I mean, Nintendo's business practices are pretty bad. I honestly think they're the worst of the bunch right now when it comes to console developers, but their franchises are hardly outdated. Different strokes for different folks, I guess. Both of these groups of fanboys are completely low IQ idiots who make irrational, illogical, impulsive financial decisions. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, a console certainly isn't a great investment compared to a gaming PC, but if you prefer consoles, you're not stupid or irrational or anything like that. People have their reasons, and as long as your reasoning isn't factually incorrect, do whatever you want. It's your money. But the more I think about it, there is an even bigger group of scumbags, an even bigger group of elitists who make even worse financial decisions than those two groups combined. The government? Ladies and gentlemen, the PC master race. I was wrong. Oh yes, your PC master race. Where to begin? Well, the image we're looking at here is a good starting point. Like, seriously, how old is that computer on screen? Where to begin with these socially inept little trolls who crawl out of their cave, leave their house once a year? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I've actually been pretty busy recently. That's why I haven't been making many videos the last couple weeks. Been traveling. I got engaged. I'm a busy guy. And when I get home from the road, you bet your ass I'm digging into that Steam summer sale backlog. Just because you're not a very active person doesn't mean that everyone else is in the same boat as you. My god, get some sunlight! And you want to talk about poor financial decisions? Oh my god, these PC guys just dump more and more money into their little box so that they can get something like, um, well, let's see here, 2% better graphics than the consoles. I'm really gonna need a source on that 2% there, but a gaming PC will likely cost you more than a console, yes, but the performance and options you'll get in return are exponentially better than anything Microsoft or Sony or Nintendo can give you. If I want to change some of the hardware of my machine, I can just do that. You can't. It's an option that we have and you don't. The consoles are the baseline for development. They're literally not. Technological advancements in gaming happen almost exclusively on the PC because the hardware isn't locked in place for a decade at a time. The platform also isn't owned by any one company, so the indie scene is allowed to thrive and persist instead of being pigeonholed into somewhere the corporate overlords want it to be. They always have been, they always will be. It's never been like that, and it's not like that now. If you go look at something like Resident Evil or Doom played on even a PlayStation 4 Pro against a 3090, there's no discernible difference. I'm two minutes into your video and I'm starting to think it's a troll. Doom and Resident Evil on the PS4 Pro versus a 3090. And you can't see the difference? Really? I mean, just in frame rates alone, you'll have a huge difference, assuming you even know what frame rates are. Maybe you can't tell from all the motion blur. If you got it blown up on an 8K monitor... Yeah, no, let me just go pick up an 8K monitor. Yeah, you're gonna see a difference. 3090 is $1,500. You could buy three Xbox Series Xs, and these PC guys have the gall. They, they think they have the fucking balls to talk about online fees when they're dropping 15... <laughs> <laughs> They're dropping $1,500 on a graphics card. First of all, not every PC gamer is going to buy a 3090. Again, with a hardware choice thing, we don't have to buy every new graphics card that comes out. But if you play on console, yes, eventually you have to buy a new console. And we have options for what we want to buy. You don't. That's another thing. You brushed over the whole online fees on console, but that shit adds up. But, you know, maintaining your gaming hobby on console is far more expensive than on PC. Sure, the upfront price of the PC is more, but the games are cheaper. We don't pay for online. Our hardware lasts longer. Our hardware isn't locked into generations. Yes. There, you know, there are generations of PC hardware, but upgrading between them is completely optional. 
Our peripherals are cheaper, we have way more free games, and just more games in general. Once you have the PC in your home, literally everything is cheaper than on console, and that PC can cost you really anything you want it to. Yes, there are $1,500 graphics cards out there, but you don't have to buy them if you don't want it. You don't have to spend anywhere near $1,500 to get better performance than the consoles. Finance is not their strong suit. Well, critical thinking isn't yours. They're addicted to upgrading. We're literally not. According to Best Buy, the most popular graphics card right now is the GTX 1650. And according to the most recent Steam survey, the 10 series is still extremely popular. Now, I don't usually like using Steam surveys because I don't think they're a good representation of what avid PC gamers are using, but in, in, you know, in a general debate like this, this chart alone will still shit down your throat. If PC gamers were addicted to upgrading, how would this chart even exist? Seriously, when that 4000 series of NVIDIA cards is unveiled, and they start creaming their pants at the fucking thought of dropping what'll probably be a $2,000 price tag on your 4090 because NVIDIA loves to skyrocket the prices of their higher end GPUs. Actually, the market prices of the 30 series are completely reasonable. NVIDIA isn't the one jacking up the prices. That's the crypto farmers and the resellers. The market prices on NVIDIA cards are completely reasonable for the most part. I mean, the 3070 retails for $500 and it stomps the consoles and game performance. They're just gonna sit back, look at their bank account and think, hmm, no. Why not? Why not dump more money into an endless cycle? I mean, if someone wants to spend that money, who are you to tell them they're wrong? They're a fucking hamster in a wheel, and NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel have these PC idiots by the fucking balls. You started this video talking about how anti-consumer the consoles are, and now you're going on a whole anti-consumer PC rant, and like, I just have to ask, do you play games? Like, like, do you play games? Seriously, how much money have these idiots dumped into their systems? How much money have you dumped into yours? Now, I saw a guy on the Build a PC subreddit asking... <laughs> he actually asked if 64 gigabytes of RAM was required or advisable for gaming in 2021. What's wrong with that? If you're new to the hobby and new to PCs, and you may not know how much RAM is optional. I legitimately don't see the issue here. 64 gigabytes of RAM. How much RAM is on a console? It's like the PC fanboys, PC Master Race, can't wrap their head around diminishing returns. That's not what diminishing returns means. You're gonna dump what's probably two to three hundred dollars on 64 gigabytes of RAM in 2021 to play video games. Well, no, he's probably not going to buy 64 gigs of RAM because that's unnecessary and it's a good thing he asked before making the purchase. Now, most people, most people probably don't do that. Okay, so why is it an argument? But I see a lot of people with 32 gigs of RAM in their system. They have a 3090. They've got the freaking Threadripper. Like, my God, how much money? When does it stop? It stops when you stop buying stuff because it's all optional on PC. Since when were options a bad thing for a gaming platform? The reason that the Xbox Series X stomps the ever-loving fuck out of PC gaming and makes it irrelevant is because for one entry price, $500, a fraction of the cost of your precious little system. And a fraction of the performance and features and services and games and peripherals, but go on. You will be able to enjoy 4K gaming at 60 FPS for an upcoming seven to eight years. The Series X does not do native 4K 60 FPS on every game. To imply that it does is dishonest. The PC can brute force its way to that performance on pretty much anything. Obviously, it's a case-by-case -case thing, but depending on the game, depending on your hardware, that sort of thing, at the end of the day, virtually every game on the PC can be cranked up to 4K60 in one way or another. On the consoles, a game can only get that high if the developer specifically allows it, and that's assuming the hardware can handle it. Also, dynamic 4K is not the same as actual 4K. The value proposition cannot be understated. The... what? Now, unfortunately, the PC fan base is comprised of members with an IQ lower than their shoe size, and much more money than cents. Okay, so we have big feet and a lot of money, got it. So they make their decisions willy-nilly, throwing money at these companies so they can keep jacking the prices up 
of not just the high-end cards anymore. You want to talk about getting into PC gaming? Never mind the fact that we're at the worst time ever to buy a GPU and you need to spend $1,500 on eBay to get one of the 3000 series cards. You realize it's a horrible time to buy a console right now too, right? And you don't have to spend anywhere near $1,500 for a 30 series card. The higher end ones, maybe, but the lower end ones, no. And the lower end ones still get better performance than consoles. So... Never mind the fact that a 1050 Ti, a graphics card from 2016 or 2017, is going for almost $200 used. Yeah, because it's not in production anymore. And one used price is not the universal used price. Have you ever noticed on eBay, sometimes you'll see something going for way more than it's actually worth, and you have to wonder who the hell's buying it? It's because the seller sets the price for a used piece of hardware. Just because something in North Dakota is selling for $200, that doesn't mean the actual value of that thing is $200. You're telling people to go dump money into an endless upgrade cycle. The console marketplace is literally just an industry of endless upgrades. Holy shit, I can't think of a worse way to invest, that's air quotes, invest your money. I can think of a few, most of them from Sony. All right, so you go spend 1.5 to $2,000. Well, it doesn't end there. No, you've got this beastly rig and you want to be able to play at 144 hertz. Something you literally can't do on an Xbox. You know, you want to get these high refresh rates. Well, now you got to go buy a 144 hertz refresh rate monitor. And if you want to play at 120 FPS on console, you need a 120 hertz monitor. And a 4K monitor if you want to play in 4K. This isn't a point. And you're not going to be playing at 1080p because you just, you know, that's that's last generation. We're not going to have 1080p gaming in 2021. Yes, we are. 1080p is still the standard for gaming, whether you like it or not. The vast majority of people are playing in 1080p. So you go drop five to $600 on a 1440p or 4K, 144 hertz monitor. You're overblowing that price. Now you're up to damn near... 2.5 to $3,000. And isn't it convenient that you weren't factoring in 4K or 120 hertz monitor prices when you were talking about the price of an Xbox? <laughs> it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And you know what? That's not even the end of it because you're not guaranteed anything future proof with PC gaming. In two years, the 4000 series will be out. More tech coming out doesn't mean the current tech is obsolete. I'm running the 2070 and I get way better performance at 1080p than the consoles do and you'll be feeling a tickle in the back of your mind, hmm, I might need to upgrade. Because the developers, again, this is what the PC guys don't understand. They're missing logical thinking skills that allow them to connect the dots, all right? Glass houses, sir. Glass houses. Because the consoles are the target and the baseline, and that's where most of the population plays AAA games. AAA games, sure. All games, no. There are way more PC gamers worldwide than console. Upgrading to the 4090 or the 4080 or whatever yields such diminishing results, it's not worth the investment. First of all, I don't think you know what the word diminishing means. Second of all, PC gamers have the option to upgrade in two years. As a, That's a positive. What upgrade options will you have on Xbox in two years? And before you say, oh, we don't need upgrade options, a corporation refusing to give you options in your purchase is not a good thing. And the PC is already leagues ahead of the consoles in terms of technical performance. A lack of options and a lack of upgrades is not the hill you want to die on right now. Just like upgrading to the 3000 series is not a worthwhile investment. But why not? The 2000 series is not a worthwhile investment. But why not? The most pop- and see, the general population is not made up of PC fanboys. PC fanboys? No. PC gamers? Yes. And I respect that. I honestly do. The general population knows this. That's why the most popular graphics card on Steam is a 1060 followed by a 1050 Ti. You're talking about budget PC gaming dominating the landscape. By this logic, the strongest console on the market right now is the PS4 because the most people own that. You see why I don't like Steam surveys? Just because something is the most popular, that doesn't mean it's the most powerful or the best option. It just means more people have had the chance to buy one. More people own PS4s than PS5s. Does that mean the PS4 is a better investment or a more powerful piece of hardware? Yeah, that's the other thing. The 10 series of graphics cards are really good still. They may not be at the level of a Series X or a PS5, but they're still solid budget cards, and even a budget PC will afford you all the benefits of PC gaming. You may be a few steps behind on graphics on a budget PC, but you still get higher frame rates, graphical options, free online, cheaper games, more games in general and all the other things that a PC can give you and consoles can't. Aren't the console guys always the ones saying graphics aren't everything? 
So PC guys, don't come in here telling me, oh, there's a good value proposition. You just got to invest at the right time. The public speaks with their wallets. Yeah, the public speaks with their wallets, which is why there are more PC gamers than console gamers globally. It's it's not even close. Those idiots out there paying $3,000 for their rigs, the idiots dumping half of that budget into a $1,500 3090 are not making up the primary PC user base. Uh, what? But they like to pretend that they are. They like to pretend that everybody's got some big fancy 2.5K rig sitting in their office. It's just got a 4K monitor hooked up to it. Again, with 4K monitors only being part of the conversation when you need them to be. And you got a VR headset. That's another thing, VR. VR is completely optional. Yeah, it's not like it does on the PlayStation. No, 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 you got to pay $300 to get you an Oculus Quest 2. Okay, so what about other headsets? Or are you such a console peasant you just can't wrap your head around the existence of competing hardware? All right, that's the cost of an Xbox Series S. You want me to keep going? I really don't, but I haven't uploaded it in a couple of weeks, so I guess you can keep going. All right, you really, you really want me to keep going? There's no compelling argument to put a PC, a gaming PC in your home. I've already made at least a dozen arguments. There's just not. No, that is absolutely ridiculous. You idiots spending that kind of money. You keep going right back to the, oh, there's no compelling argument for PC gaming because it costs so much money. So, like... Which one is it? You're so close to admitting that PC gaming doesn't actually have to cost you that much money, but I, I don't know if you're self-aware enough to even realize that. You guys need to, here's what you do when you, because you, there's two problems here. Number one, you're addicted to upgrading. Number two, you have very poor financial planning skills. Coming from the guy who bought a Series X. And very poor financial management. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna call your local addiction hotline and tell them you're addicted to upgrading your GPU and your CPU every few years after they're done laughing, after they take you off hold, telling all their coworkers what a joke that you are, they will get you professional help. And this video has lost all substance. I'm tapping out of this one. You're either a troll or an idiot, but the fact you closed your comment section, I'm leaning towards the latter. Anyway, sorry for the lack of videos recently. I have uh, been insanely busy. I got engaged, lots of traveling. I moved last week, it's been real hectic. But I'm settled again, the craziness is over, and the video grind will begin once again. You can reach out to me on Twitter at Joe from Seattle One if you want to keep up with what I'm doing and you want to send me a video that you want me to take a look at and potentially respond to. You can donate to the channel with the link in the description if you're super awesome. Not at all required, but very much appreciated. And if you're into punk music, you can come check out my band Curbside Anthem on Spotify and Apple Music, or you can listen to all our stuff for free on my music channel, link in the description. Welcome back. It's good to be back. Toodles.